Welcome back to <laughs> Sister Sokola. He's a popular worship leader and Christian artist who graced the stage on NBC's The Voice in its second season. And he's also the son of fame pastor, Dr. Tony Evans. He joins us now to break down his new book, Unexpected Places. Please welcome Anthony Evans. Yay! Thank you. Yes. How's it going, ladies? Hello, Hello. Anthony. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Welcome to the circle. Good to see you. Thank good to you. See you. Welcome, welcome. How are you? Fantastic. Good, 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 good. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. My goodness. Anthony, Anthony. What's going on? So you were down to The Voice. The NBC's <laughs> The Voice on the second yes, season. Yes, which is a long time ago now, but yeah. yes. Yes, but you know what was so cool? I mean, growing up as a PK kid, you still decided to sing secular music, mm -hmm. you know. What, was that decision intentional? Because was was it a you know a reason why you did not sing gospel on the voice or no i was just I, I was at a point in my career where i could do something like that i, I just got out of my record deal mm -hmm. and so i was at a point where i just wanted to do it i got a phone call and was like let, let me go try this and i called my dad being right. a preacher's kid you know mm -hmm. i want to make sure it's all that's, good it's right. all right it's all good <laughs> and he said to me a couple of things he said as long as you don't compromise your faith go have a great time mm -hmm. right. and then he followed it up by saying you're salt of the earth not salt of the shaker so all right all right all why right are you, why, why is this even a question you Message. should you should be doing that yes. wow yeah. that's amazing yes. yeah. so let's talk about your book unexpected places thoughts on god faith and finding your voice why was it so important for you to write this book and why now you know, I, I feel like a lot of times when you're in a position of leadership, especially as it relates to ministry, mm -hmm. people know the tip of the iceberg of mm -hmm. you. They, they get to see this much, and there's a lot beneath the surface, more beneath the surface they could connect with than the guy they mm -hmm. see on the stage. So I felt like it was an appropriate time to tell more of the story of what's going on beneath the surface of me, because as as a uh, onlooker in the audience, I a lot of times growing up, I wish I would have known more about people's story, what they've really been facing, and I wouldn't right. have felt so alone in what I was mm -hmm. going through. Mm -hmm. yeah. How long did it take you to write this book? It took about three months, but the reason why it was such a short, that, that's short for me, because I have that's a that's <laughs> that's <laughs> It took me five years. Yeah, 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 okay, got so. you. I'm, I'm an like, 80 you week kid, so I was like, yo, I can do this book if you let me do micro chapters, like three, three or four page chapters, but I, I was actually, I injured my voice in 2017. I spent mm. three months of 2017 in total silence. And oh. I, I got the book deal right before I injured my voice. Wow. So I had to be silent and your, write. But that was your way. Yeah, yeah. that loud. was it. And I could hear you know so what? clearly without, you know, exactly. I couldn't speak. Let's get into your book. Mm -hmm. um, in your book, you chronicle how despite a great amount of success, that you still battled with depression. Um, and you had some very low points, spiritually, mentally, mm -hmm. emotionally. Um, in the book you say, and I quote, when I needed to pray the most, it seemed like prayer was the hardest thing in the world to do. Mm, right. My goodness, talk us through that. What space were you in? You know what I'm yeah, saying? Cause yeah. I, I mean, I, I get it, I totally understand, but what space were you in? What put you there? Yeah, I was, I was in a place where I was the great pretender. I know I'm mm. preacher's kid. We know how to smile, shake hands, <laughs> kiss babies. You know what? <laughs> right. we, we know how to, and it's un, nobody's telling us to. We just know how to turn it on. Best yeah. behavior, do that whole thing. So I was going through a broken engagement. I had people in my life who had no business being there, and I had to get up on stage and sing about the faithfulness of God. And it wow. was that dichotomy. Authenticity is why, like, it's, it's fuel for me. Yeah. And to be disingenuous to what I was actually going through. Mm got me to the point where I, I couldn't hold it together anymore. Wow. I, I literally could not hold it together anymore. And I had to, I had to, it, I had to choose one direction or other at yeah. that point. And I was gonna lose it or deal with it. Oh, get, yeah. Yeah, yeah. get it all popping. Yeah. 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 These people out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And I know what it's like to be a preacher's kid. Mm -hmm. Okay, both of my parents were ministers uh -huh. and my house was made out of glass. Okay? <laughs> yeah, 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 people yeah. were watching our every move, our every step. And you know, and your, do your, your, your father is uh, Dr. Uh, Tony Evans. Yes. And a, a quote that you made is, ministers aren't perfect. You grow up and you figure out that your mom and dad are human. Mm -hmm. And I understand that, especially with both parents being ministers. Mm -hmm. And I had to separate my father the minister and my father who's giving me spankings at home. Yeah, you understand yeah, yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? So when, when it came time for you in your calling, how did seeing that difference between your dad the minister and daddy at home, how, how did that how did that change or alter your call to ministry, if at all? You know what, it, it didn't alter it that much, but it's, there's one reason. It's because my dad and my mom are some amazing people who mm -hmm. weren't different at home. You know, preacher's kids were always one degree from crazy. Like, yeah, we're, oh my we're, God, we're real yes. close to being crazy. And I read crazy. that in your book. That was yeah, in your book. Yeah, you yeah, said yeah. that. <laughs> so I, 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 my, because of my parents, there was nothing different between who they were at home and who they were mm -hmm. on the stage. Mm -hmm. That is why I stand uh, stand true in my calling now. But mm -hmm. I still had moments where I, I didn't enjoy the glass house feeling. Mm -hmm. I was like, y'all, y'all got to go talk to your own dad. Like, y'all yeah. got to stop knocking on. You know, people felt 
my dad has always kept this little big church feel. It's a big church, but people feel like they can come and knock on the door. Yes. And, and I was like, go talk to your own daddy. Because right, right. I got this one, you know what I mean? Right. So I had major issues with it that I had to deal with because I was an introverted kid that was going through a lot of internal struggles, but I, I had to share my dad exactly. with all these people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, real quickly, tell us about your album. It's oh, called yeah. Everything Else. <laughs> yeah. So what's the yeah. else? I, I heard a quote. <laughs> I heard a quote. Child? by C.S. Lewis that said, we don't need more literature by Christians about Christianity. We need mm. more literature by Christians about everything else. Yes. Oh, wow. And that then is... there's that. Yeah. So I, that. as I was writing the book, I was having to relive these things I had gone through, mm -hmm. you know, what depression, anxiety, all these things. And I started to write songs about my experience as a human. There's a yes. lot of people mm who won't identify with the tip of the iceberg. Especially yeah. in LA, you realize that there are people who didn't grow up in church like mm -hmm. this. Right. Mm -hmm. So I got to talk about everything else underneath the surface and that, that the songs go along with the, with the book Very and, nice. Very and nice. talk about real life lessons that and I've had to And you're gonna reach real life people because yes. of those real right. life lessons. That's, exactly. that's the goal, exactly. that's the goal. And so again, the title <laughs> of your book is called Unexpected Places. Mm -hmm. So what was the most unexpected place God showed up and showed out for you? Yeah. Well, one of them is is that what I mentioned earlier about the um, broken engagement and all that all that mess. Mm -hmm. I decided in that moment because I couldn't hold it together. I remember flying to a show, getting on the stage, and so I said into the microphone, "I don't feel like doing this." And I have watched. I know. Oh I, my it was, oh my road gosh. manager was like, "So must, this that, is that how was, it that was is." Inside. That was oh inside. Yeah, that had just came out. Out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we have run out of time. Okay, I wish okay. we could just yeah, go no, in on um, maybe some social media. But we want to thank you so much for joining us. Pick up his album, get his book, "Unexpected Places." It's wherever fine books are sold, and you can get his album, everything else, also online. Yeah, pick up.